Hello, Sorcerers. This week, I want to talk a little inside baseball. I don't usually do that so much in this channel, but I want to talk about making videos and making content while I'm making a video and making content. I'll explain why. In some of my other videos, I discuss why I do this and why I like to make YouTube videos and make content about professional things and procurement things. I've mentioned before that I do not make money on this YouTube channel. I don't make money YouTubing. I am not the right demographic to make money. But in my real job that pays the bills, I've been there for a very, very long time, over two decades. And because most of my professional career has been at one place, I feel that it's important to have a brand and a reputation outside of that place. I have no beef with my company whatsoever. I'm very grateful for being employed and working there for so long. But because I've been there for so long, I think it's important to find ways of trying to interact with other professionals and establish, again, a name in the industry outside of that company. And I've been doing this for, for years, whether it was a blog, a vlog, a podcast. I've been doing some iteration of throwing these messages in a bottle for years, since 2013, I've had some professional instance or iteration of something to try to engage with people outside of my company. And honestly, I think it's a good idea for you, the viewer, to also think about that. Think about your career, your professional reputation, and are you making a name out there? Are you somehow letting future employers, future clients, future customers, are you letting them know what you're capable of doing, not within the confines of your normal work day, your normal work output? What I'm saying is, I think that you should make content. If you're watching this video right now, you're probably interested in a lot of that stuff. One of the absolutely unexpected consequences of my desire to make content and to make videos and podcasts is that now I have a library of stuff, of topics, of content, of information that if something bubbles up in my day-to-day -day life, I might go to a customer, a client, or an employee and say, oh, I made a video on that two years ago. Check it out. I didn't proactively do that. I didn't say, oh, I'm going to have this great library of content that comes along with me. But it exists now, and it's kind of awesome. And it's just one of those things that makes you slightly more interesting and slightly more valuable to, again, your employer, to a future employer, to a client, to a customer, all of those things. They may see that and be like, oh, wow, I had no idea that they were doing all of that stuff on the side. And that's very helpful. I should be clear, especially if you are working for a large corporation, before you go off and do anything, you should check with your HR department, they might have an ethics department. Before you do anything where you're making content that's related to your field, check with somebody in your company to make sure it is not a conflict of interest. I had to do that. What you do on a day-to-day -day basis, what you do as a career, you can talk about those things in general terms. You don't have to be so specific. And I take great pains to keep it as generic as humanly possible. And what I will do is I will find articles that echo my personal thoughts or reinforce my personal thoughts. So there are citations of external data that have absolutely nothing to do with things generated at my company. There are always citations. Allow me to nerd out for a few minutes. If you're watching this video, you know that I have camera equipment. I have all of this stuff that I use to make these videos. And it's a big reason why I make career and procurement-based videos is I need a reason to use this stuff that I buy. So I have a photography and videography hobby. I have an interest in doing those things, but I don't always have inspiration. So I've been using for years my actual work as an inspiration to make content and to make things on my own. If I'm spending 80 hours a week working and focusing on something, and it's a great area to make content. So I'm gonna talk about gear for a couple of minutes. I have another YouTube channel where I am constantly talking about gear and reviewing cameras and lenses and audio equipment and all that other stuff. I keep that very clean and very separated from this channel. 
The first thing that I'm going to say is you don't need fancy equipment to make YouTube videos and to make content. Your iPhone, especially if you have one from the last couple of years, can record really great video, really great video. I will probably insert some video from an iPhone and from a Pixel phone. Your phone looks great. So if that's the thing that you have, use it. The important thing is to start making content. The important thing is to start to develop a rhythm, to develop a style. So you don't need to spend money on a camera, especially not right out of the gate. What I would say in a lot of cases is that lighting is more important than the camera that you're using. So right now I have a light set up over here. I have a ring light. I will probably take a picture of that setup. I was actually supposed to set up a camera and I didn't. But even for lighting, you don't need to spend money. The best light that you could possibly ever use is the sun. Film your videos near a window, but don't be behind a window, right? You don't, you don't wanna have like the camera looking at the light. Sit 45 degrees from a window in either side, right? Cause right now my ring light, it's 45 degree angle in my face. And you can even have, you, could, you can get crazy with lighting. You can have a fill light. One of the things that I found to be super important, and if you've been watching these videos for a long time, you've probably realized this, having lighting behind you to avoid shadows, to me is, is, is a big deal. So that's why I have all of this stuff behind me, is to kind of kill shadows and to add some texture and some separation between myself and the camera. But again, you don't need to spend money on any of that stuff right out of the gate. Buy a cheap tripod for like $10, just keep, keep your camera level and flat and not moving. That's super important and I'll get to why in a second. Editor's note, as I was editing this video, I realized that there was a very important topic that I completely forgot to mention. While I said don't invest in fancy camera equipment or lighting or even microphones initially, one thing that you absolutely should invest in is a editing program that you are comfortable with. The key to all of this, the key to making content is good editing. It doesn't have to be expensive. I don't use the fancy programs. I use something called Power Director by a company called Cyberlink. And uh, it's actually gotten pretty good over the last couple of years. The most recent updates have been working really well. So I use something that is not like a commercial grade video editing software. I tried DaVinci Resolve and I could not figure it out. Whatever you use, whatever you are comfortable with, amen. But editing is the most important part to making the content, making it concise. I may spend 25, 30 minutes recording a video, but I spend hours editing it. And that is really where you make the magic happen. So you don't have to invest a lot of money in tools. But one thing that you should prioritize is editing. Back to the video. Now, one thing you may wanna invest in is a microphone. There are kits that will attach directly to your iPhone uh, or to your Android phone. Or again, if you have a fancier camera, there are all kinds of microphones that you can use. I've gone through quite a journey about microphones. If you find my other channel, I'll probably link to it. I have spent thousands of dollars on microphones on various solutions and you can get obsessive about it. I'm pretty crazy about audio from my podcast days. When you're getting more serious about what you're doing, you want your video to look good and you want it to sound good. I think the sound is actually in some ways more important than the video because if something doesn't sound right or you can't hear well, it's gonna immediately take you out of the video. And with lighting, a good light solution will make a bad camera really pop. It'll, it'll improve a lot of problems, but bad lighting will make a great camera look like garbage. Again, whether it's a ring light, a diva light, whatever you wanna call it, a simple LED panel, or you use a window, you don't have to spend a lot of money, but you should think about how things look in the camera, especially from a lighting perspective. So you don't have to go crazy, and I don't think that you should. The important thing is making content and getting into a rhythm of making content, which leads to my next point, which is developing content. Let me tell you, this is the struggle. Right now, making this video, I've been thinking about this video for probably a month. I'm like, mm, do people wanna see it? Should I make a video? Is it too inside baseball? Do people really care about a video, talking about making videos? I don't know if you're gonna like this, but I try to have four or five video ideas kind of constantly floating around. So 
if I have an opportunity, I like to record them in bulk because I set all this stuff up and I break it down every time I'm done. So if possible, being able to record multiple videos in the same session <laughs> is amazing. So yes, it's important to have ideas and I struggle with having ideas and trying to keep up with a consistent schedule. That was my big goal for 2023 was to release a video every two weeks. And with my other channel, I was also releasing every two weeks. So I was basically doing a video once a week. It's not for financial reasons. I just wanted to know if I was capable of producing a video a week or a video every two weeks. And I did. And I'm proud of myself, but I don't know if I need to keep doing that either. But I will say, if you are looking to develop an audience, that YouTube algorithm, it definitely rewards you for consistency. And your audience rewards you for consistency because they know when to expect your videos and they kind of start to rely on that. I would recommend before you start to publish your videos, maybe get two or three in the can, get them scheduled and give yourself a bit of a buffer. And if you're struggling with, well, yeah, I'd like to make a video, but I don't know what to talk about. Think about the things that you're struggling with at your work. Think about things that maybe you've recently discovered or recently resolved or figured out how to do something. I would say that informational, instructional videos are the way to go. I don't think people care about vlogging anymore unless you're like Casey Neistat or a handful of like micro celebrities. I don't think people are looking for that anymore. I don't think that you care about what I do when I'm not talking about procurement stuff, right? The way that I sometimes find inspiration for videos is looking for things that I wish that I had. So again, 80% of the time I'm trying to solve a problem that I'm dealing with at work uh, or uh, maybe an employee is dealing with a problem and I want to provide them that instruction. While I don't talk about work on these videos, I use these videos at work all of the time. I try to make this content work for me, like interest in the bank. The content exists. If it helps an employee or a coworker, I want them to have access to this stuff and I want them to use it. So I often create content with them in mind. I highly recommend that you use a notebook or you use an app on your phone that takes notes to jot down ideas as the inspiration comes to you. Sometimes I'm on a walk and I'm like, oh, that would be a great idea for a video. Sometimes I'm listening to a podcast and I'll be like, mm, that one line that's triggering a whole thought process and I'll jot it down and I'll try to turn it into a video somehow. I do that all of the time and for years, I didn't think to write it down. I'm like, I'll remember, and I never remembered. And it's very frustrating to know that you had a cool idea and it's slipped through your fingers. Keep a notebook around, keep a notepad, use your phone, jot ideas down. It will help you make content and it will feel very rewarding to check those things off the list. If multiple people that you work with or that you know are all taking this advice and making content, now you have a bit of a network. And that's sort of, one of my loftier goals is to collaborate with people and to bring this content and information together and build a de facto decentralized network of content creators for this type of professional career advice. So if you're on the fence about making content, maybe share this idea with your friend. Maybe you guys can do it together or you can create your own individual videos and kind of team up and share that content on one channel. There's different ways that you can do it, but if you feel like you're doing it alone, I feel, especially when I first started, I felt so alone doing this stuff and it feels weird. It feels weird talking to a camera. And I wish that I had a buddy and I tried to recruit buddies to do this and I failed miserably and I just pushed ahead. But it's a new world. You know, that was 10 years ago. I think more people might be open to it. So if you're struggling with the idea and you don't know if you should do it or how you could do it, do it with a friend. And then you got an activity too. So I'm not gonna overburden you guys with too many concepts and too many ideas. If you have questions about this, I'm actually a pretty good resource to ask. I'm not saying that I have the biggest channel in the world, but having like 900 subscribers for a procurement channel, I think it's pretty good for what it is. And actually that's another point. Don't necessarily niche down into a specific topic until you've, until you've tried a bunch of things. Don't get super specific on a niche until you've discovered where your passions lie. Do more generic, broader things. I wish that I did that, especially when I started this particular channel. 
Uh, my other personal channel is literally my personal channel. It's like what I started when I got a Gmail account and like that's all over the place. There's travel videos, there's camera videos. It's all, it's literally all over the place. And that's super confusing for people when they're coming to the channel, like, what is this? For this channel, I wish I went a little bit broader sooner. So that's also something to consider. But seriously, ask questions on this video. I'm happy to give advice and share anything that I've learned or anything that I know up to this point. And I appreciate that you guys are watching these videos. I appreciate that this audience is growing and I have a very service focused attitude when it comes to making this content. So I really truly hope that it's helping and I do appreciate the comments when people step in and say, this really helped me on an interview. That makes me wanna keep making these videos, truly. And again, I am doing this because I like to make videos and I like to help people. And again, and I say this, it's not to make money. So if this is helping you, let me know. And if there's something else that I can do to help you, if something else, some other content, some other question that I can answer, I'd be very happy to do so. So, you know, part of this creator thing is interacting. So let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching. And I'll be back with another video in two weeks. Take care.